Hello coders and welcome to another How to Code Well PHP tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at the PHP Arrange function. Now this function allows us to create an array with a range of elements and we can control the start and end of this range as well as how many steps this range increments by. So let's go and take a look at the code. Let's say, for instance, you want to generate an array of numbers between, say, 1 and 25. And you want to do this dynamically, so you don't want to be hard coding these numbers in. Now, we can use the PHP range to do that. So let's say we have a variable called basket. Now, what we would have to do without this range function is, of course, manually create this range of elements. But what we can do is use the range function to generate the array on the fly. So let's type range. Now, before I add the arguments to this range function, let's go and take a look at the documentation. So I'm going to just control click the function. And as you can see, it takes three arguments. The first is the start. This is the start of the range. And then we have end, this becomes the end of the range. Also, we can supply a step. And by default, this step is set to one. So this is the amount of times this range is incremented. So let's scroll up to the top here and we can take a look at the full documentation. So create an array containing a range of elements. This is the link to the PHP documentation. Do check it out for other examples. So the arguments that we can supply are the start. This, as I mentioned, is the first value of the sequence. The second argument is the end. This is the end of the sequence. The sequence is ended upon reaching the end value. So this could be one, this could be 10, creating us 10 elements within this array. We also have the ability of supplying the step. Now, this is the third argument of this function. This could either be an integer or a floating point. If a step value is given, it will be used as an increment between elements in the sequence. Step should be given as a positive number. If not specified, step will default to one. OK, so let's go back to the code and take a look at how we can use this. So let's create a range between 1 and 25. So what I need to do is pass in 1 and then comma 25. This is going to create an array with 25 elements in it. As before, what we need to do is print this out to the screen. So let's type print and then pre. Underneath the pre tag, type print r and then pass in the variable of basket as before. Also, let's close this pre tag. So type print and then a closing tag like so. Okay, save your work, go to the browser and navigate to array underscore range dot PHP. Now all of the code is available. I've added a link to the description. There's also a link as well to a video that I did explaining how to use the PHP a local server using the command line. OK, so I've just refreshed the page here and we can see that we have 25 elements within this array. Now, we haven't manually hard coded this array. We've used the range function here. We started with one and we ended with 25. But of course, we can manipulate the start and end variables that we supply to the range function call. So let's say, for example, we wanted to create an array between 10 and 20. We can do that. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that now. So back into the code, let's change 1 to 10 and let's change 25 to 20. Save your work, go back to the browser and refresh the page. Now we can see that we have 10 elements in this array and we start from 10 and we end on 20. As I mentioned at the start of this video, we can also manipulate the incremental step that the range takes. So let's say, for example, we want to increment this by a factor of 10 each time. Let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So by default, we're incrementing these elements within this range by one. Let's say we want to do this, though, by a factor of 10. Now, to do this, we need to add the third argument, which is the step argument. Let's put in 10 like so. 
Once again, save your work and then go back to the browser and refresh your page. Here we can see that we have only two elements, 10 and 20. This is because the end was set to 20 and yet the incremental factor is 10. So it's only going to do two increments. The first element being 10, that's what we started with. And the second element being 20, that's what we end with, with the knowledge that we want to increment each step by 10. So let's go back to the code and change the end argument to 100. So instead of 20 here, let's change that to 100. Once again, save your work, go back to the browser and refresh the page. So now we have 10 elements and they're incrementing by 10 each time. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on until we get to the end variable, which is 10. Now the range function isn't limited to just numeric elements. We can also get the range function to generate characters for us. Let's say, for example, we want to generate the alphabet. What I'm going to do is copy this and paste this down here. I'm going to change the variable basket to alphabet. And of course, I need to change this variable too. In order to generate the alphabet, what I need to do is change this start point from 10 to A. Now, this, of course, is a string. And then change the end argument from 100 to Z. Let's remove the step argument here and then save your work and refresh the page. Okay, so this was the first array that we created. This was the step from 10 to 100, incrementing by 10 each time. And then down here is the alphabet from A all the way down to Z. Now, of course, we can also supply a step for the alphabet as well. And of course, we can change the start and end points of the alphabet too. So let's go back to the code and do that. The first thing I'm going to do is supply the step argument. So we're going to do this by an increment of two each time. So let's hit save and refresh the page once more. And so what we've done is we've reduced the alphabet by incrementing a step of two each time. So we no longer have B, but we do have C. So A, C, E, all the way to Z. However, because it's an odd amount, we end with Y. We can, of course, change the start and the end arguments for the alphabet as well. Let's go back to the code and play with that. Let's change this to E and the end to K. Let's hit save and then go back to the page. Okay, so we started on the letter E, we're incrementing each time by two and we're finishing off at K. Because we have an even amount of elements here, we have four, we start with the value that we have supplied, in this case it's E, and we also end with the value that we supplied, in this case it is K. If you found this coding tutorial helpful, then please do let me know. Give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the How to Code Well YouTube channel for more courses and tutorials just like this. If you've got any coding questions, then don't hesitate to ask. Thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone, and I will see you again in the next tutorial.